Hey guys, it's Megan Triple with Ellison and here for another episode of Ellison Off Script. And this week we're talking to one, the only Marie McCool. I'm so excited to have her join Off Script today because I mean, she's you, she needs really no introduction, but she's a woman of a professional lacrosse player and former North Carolina Tar Heel. So Marie, thanks for Skyping in and just going off script with me today. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. I know your schedule is pretty jam-packed, and so I really appreciate you putting me on your calendar. Let's just start there. What's a normal Monday like for you? So a normal Monday, I wake up in the morning, um, probably around like 7, 6.30-ish, to go work out um, because I have a 9 a.m. call for work every morning. Um, I work at Quest Diagnostics. I'm a sales representative for our sports diagnostics division. Um, so what that means is we do blood testing for professional athletes. Uh, we work with over 40 professional teams throughout all leagues, and NBA, NFL, MLS, MLB, NHL. And we test for health markers that can impact their athletic performance. So for example, cortisol levels, vitamin D, um, and all that. So we're just trying to help athletes perform at their peak levels and avoid injury. And that's what I do for a living every day. Um, I work from home, so it's a lot of phone calls and online meetings. And so that's what I've been doing all day today. I think a lot of people will be surprised. So you have to train, work out, and then you have like a full-time job. How do you manage all that? And when do you really kind of get that workout in? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely important for me to work out because I am still competing um, on the USA team and in the WPLL. So I just have to make sure that I'm getting enough sleep and waking up early to work out. Sometimes I just do it afterwards too, after work. Um, I'll go to the gym or go run on the turf field, get some reps in, some shooting reps. So it is important. But at the same time, I mean, college really taught me my time management skills. So it hasn't been too difficult um, it's something I've been doing my entire life. Have you, just... have you been doing any kind of like cool workouts? Cause I, mean, I, I follow you on Instagram and I feel like you're, you're boxing, you're doing yoga. What's your workout <laughs> right now? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously I'm a midfielder and I have to stay in lacrosse shape. So I have to run and do sprints and everything to stay in that shape, but I've really been exploring other options. Um, after work, I've been going to this class called rumble which is a boxing class and it is a lot of fun um highly suggest it they're really expanding into new areas right now so i think new york city they have the most locations and that's where i've been going but they're opening one in dc i think they already opened this past month in philly and then they have some in F miami and um la maybe so it's a lot of fun and then i've been going to this hot yoga class called y7 studio and that's hip-hop yoga oh um, yeah, I was never a yogi because I can't even touch my toes, but I've been working on it and it's definitely been helpful for me getting more flexible. What's your favorite kind of hip hop jam? Is there an artist that you love when you're doing hot yoga? <laughs> well, there's been a couple of different classes. One was Ariana Grande I went to and then another one was Kendrick Lamar um, and they were both really fun. So there was also a Justin Bieber versus Justin Timber Timberlake. I think that was my favorite one. Okay, if you put Justin Bieber and Timberlake together, who would you choose? Um, Timberlake, of I think. Course. That's a hard one. I think, you know, I, I don't know. I was a Bieber fan growing up, but I think Timberlake altogether is probably who I'd choose. Mm, I'm totally with you. I'm from Memphis, and so is Justin Timberlake. So shout out to Justin Timberlake and all of my Memphis people out there. <laughs> all right, so you're talking about doing boxing. How is your uppercut? Are you surprised? Like, hey, I can throw a couple of jabs now. Yeah. So when I, the reason why I got into rumble is because one of my friends from Carolina is an instructor. Um, she was on the rowing team and she was like, J come try it out. Marie. I'm like, I am going to be so bad at boxing and I'm going to look ridiculous. <laughs> like this is not lacrosse. And I was pretty surprised. Like it definitely is difficult. Um, I still don't have the rhythm down. I think tying in the footwork and also the punches is the most challenging part, but I'm definitely getting better with practice. You know, I'm, you mentioned that about going to a lot of classes in New York city for, for boxing. Why New York city? Cause I always see you in New York. I know you're always taking the train out there. You're eating everywhere. You're just living life. I mean, maybe a move to New York city coming up soon. Maybe. I um, I mean, I love New York City. It's definitely not for everyone, but I am someone who always needs to be doing something. 
and I need to be active. I can't sit around. And so New York City is a perfect place for me to be because that's kind of what the city is like, um, city that never sleeps. Mm -hmm. So so I'm always there. Um, I have a lot of friends there. And if you all don't know, Kevin Rice, my boyfriend, is there. Um, Shout him out, girl. I see you. (laughs) Yeah. So um, he's kind of the reason why I'm there but probably mainly the food. <laughs> How did this whole you and Kevin Rice thing happen? Can you give us your, like, your love story? <laughs> um, so he went to law school at Wake Forest, which is kind of close to UNC when I was there. So we had mutual friends. One of my friends dated someone from that he played with at Syracuse. So they introduced us, and um, yeah, then it was, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> so what is that like you guys both being professional lacrosse players are you guys very competitive uh yeah I mean he's also a lawyer so <laughs> true <laughs> it's hard to compete with him but uh yeah sometimes I'm right and he knows it but <laughs> um yeah I mean it's it's working both competitive but it's a good balance um it's nice to have someone to be able to talk about my career with both you know on the lacrosse field and off the mm-hmm. lacrosse field mm-hmm. And it's been a good balance. Oh, nice. I love it. So you're always in New York City visiting Kevin and then just living your best life, which I love. How does this, you know, co- conflict with your, because you're a Philly fan too. So when you're in <laughs> New York, I, I, I imagine you have to be meeting a lot of mad New York fans and then you're going up against as a Philly fan. What is that like? Yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of New Yorker. I mean, like Giants fans and Knicks fans. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a good argument for the Knicks because they're not very good. No, they've been <laughs> but, good for a while now. <laughs> yeah, but they might get Zion, so they'll, they'll be fine in the future. But for now, we're all good. Um, yeah, but, I mean, the good thing about New York is people are from everywhere. So every time I see an Eagles fan on the street, I'm always yelling, go Birds. Um, <laughs> I always see them on Sundays, on um, – football Sundays. So it's nice. But yeah, I am a huge Philly sports fan. I grew up, I was born in Philly and then I grew up in Morristown, New Jersey, which is about 15 minutes over the bridge. So I spent a lot of time there as a kid. I had season tickets with the Phillies. Um, but right now the 76ers and the Eagles are my favorite teams. Um, disappointing, disappointing ending this year with the Eagles, but when they won the Super Bowl, I cried. (laughs) It might have been because I was also in Chapel Hill and all my friends were in Philly celebrating, but (laughs) it was still an amazing experience. And then the NBA, I'm a really big Sixers fan. I've gone to a few games this year, Um, but I honestly just like watching the NBA in general. I'm Mm -hmm. always watching whatever team's on. I think it's really fun to watch, and it's something that I've really developed an interest in over the past year. Now, are you excited with this year with the Sixers? Do you think they could go all the way? I, I do. I mean, I have to be confident in my team. <laughs> um, I do. I think that they are really, you know, forming together and the chemistry is getting a lot better. They had a big win yesterday against the Bucks, which is the number one team mm-hmm. in the Eastern Conference. Um, so that's definitely something that's good, you know, that we beat the number one team in the conference in our biggest competition. So I think we can go for a run and definitely make it to the finals this year. Now, are you a college basketball fan, too? Because, you know, it's March Madness. People are going crazy over this bracket. And North Carolina, they're make, obviously, they're going dancing. And I know it had to have been tough watching the ACC tournament, you guys going down to Duke. Um, who are you rooting for? I, I mean, I, I have to ask. I think I know the answer. But do you have North Carolina <laughs> going all the way to the Final Four? Yeah, I have them winning the national championship. Oh, you do? <laughs> <laughs> Did you fill out a bracket? Um, yeah, I did. Oh, you did. Okay. So tell me your final four at least. So my final four is Duke, Mm -hmm. North Carolina, UVA there. Yeah, of course I'm Mm -hmm. picking all the number one seeds. (laughs) You're making it very easy. And of course, ACC too. Like I'm just going to keep it all in the ACC here. I know. I feel like I have to be supportive of the other ACC teams, I mean, besides Duke. But I'm trying to think. I don't remember who my last last team was. But you have North Carolina winning it all. I I filled it out yesterday. Okay. Um, Yeah, I filled it out last night. Uh, We just do it with my family. Okay. No money on the line? Uh, Nah, we just do it for fun. (laughs) Maybe a gift card. (laughs) Now, if it's North Carolina Duke, in the end of it all, is that what you have? Yes. Ooh, and you think North Carolina's round four? Star heels all the way. Yes. I think the reason why I put Duke in North Carolina um, was mainly just 
because I really want that to happen. <laughs> I think that it would be an incredible game between the two of them. I think that a lot of people want to see that happen. I mean, mm-hmm. the big, one yeah. of the biggest rivalries in sports, not just college basketball, but in sports in general, an American sport, I think it's going to be, I think it would be something that's a lot of fun to watch, but I have Carolina, the experience that they have versus all those Duke freshmen, their freshmen are incredible players and they're all going to go in the first round. And I don't want to take anything away from them, but I think that from my experience as a student athlete, having that veteran leadership is something that's just as important as skill, if not even more important. And I think that's that's what's going to lead this North Carolina team all the way. Oh, you're you're not biased or anything. Not not at all. But I love that. No, not at all. That's from what I've uh, observed over the past season. <laughs> nice. You know, is it kind of weird to hear yourself talk about being a student athlete, kind of past tense? This is your first full year not in college, not in school, your first spring, not being a student. How is that? How's that been going? It was, to be honest, it was really tough. Um, I knew it was going to be tough. I'm a really competitive person and I'm emotional. Uh, so, you know, not being able to compete at that level anymore is something Mm -hmm. that has been challenging. And also the fact that I am working and I don't get to play as much is something that's been challenging for me, but, um, it's been so exciting to watch the North Carolina team this year. They have had an incredible start to their season. Um, their only loss this year is an overtime loss to Maryland, who is a great team, um, very veteran team, lots of leadership on that team. And we have a young team. So I'm excited to see them grow throughout the year. I've already seen so many improvements. I've watched every game. I even texted some of my friends. I was like, as hard as that was for me to watch, because I wished I was out there, like, mm-hmm. I'm so proud of you. And I'm so excited to watch them this year and go to the final four and Ooh. cheer them on because I'm confident they'll be there. Um, but yeah, it's really hard, but I'm so happy and proud of all my friends that are still there because they've had such a great start to the season and I can just see, you know, their chemistry getting stronger and stronger each game. Have you seen the new lacrosse stadium yet or have you been there yet? No, I actually, last time I went was in February and it wasn't finished yet, but they were almost finished with it. So Mm -hmm. I could see like the final stages of it, but it looks amazing. Yes, it looks sick. It's dope. (laughs) I'm hoping to go down in April for their Syracuse game. Mm. Um, I haven't booked my flight yet because I don't know my schedule, but I'm hoping to go down so I can see it. Um, it's really nice. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. When you go, please make sure you come back and call us or just like video chat us so we can, so I can feel like I'm there too. Yeah. I need, I, I need to see this in person too. Definitely. <laughs> All right. So if there's anything that a fan might be surprised, is there anything you can tell us that, you know, I wish fans knew this about me? Hmm. It's a hard question. Like whether it's you watch this TV show, shopping, or where you know what you like to eat yeah. out about. Yeah, I think everyone knows I like to eat if they follow me on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> or, um, so I love shopping, um, and I also love the Food Network. So even though everyone knows I like to eat. I watch the Food Network before I go to sleep every night. I have a oh, TV wow. in my room, and I, like, seriously fall asleep to the Food Network. It's the only way I can Do you not asleep. wake up hungry? I feel like I would be. I would wake up at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, or, like, they're, they're talking about, you know, apple pie. I want apple pie. <laughs> no, it does make me hungry. It definitely does. But there's this one show, Beat Bobby Flay, that's my favorite show. It's on every single Thursday. I watch it with my mom. <laughs> Every Thursday, uh, that's my favorite show. But Chopped is a good show to go to sleep to because mm-hmm. it's a little boring, but it's also fun at the same time because it involves food. But yeah, and then besides that, like I love shopping. Um, my mom thinks I have a problem. Whenever I go away, she's like, "Oh, so you're gonna be gone for?" Because I'm actually never home. I'm always traveling, mm-hmm. but. She's like, oh, is there going to be another pair of shoes coming in the mail this week? Should I prepare for eight packages <laughs> lined up outside? I was going to ask, are you an online shopper? Are you a boutique, yeah. mall, you know, boutique. going to the store? Yeah, I love boutiques. So I'm not really like a mall girl. Um, I don't know. I just feel like if I'm shopping at Nordstrom or Urban Outfitters, I'm getting something that I might walk into a party and someone's wearing the mm-hmm. same thing as me. <laughs> so boutiques are my favorite I just went on vacation in Florida and I was like all right I'm in a, I'm in a beach town I gotta find the boutiques like I love beach town boutiques they always have the cutest clothes what did you come back with tell me your favorite buy that from from your vacation 
I came back with a jumpsuit oh. and it was black, but the front was like open. So it was kind of like a romper where you could see like the legs, but it had like a drape down. You can't really see my arm motions right now, <laughs> but it was, there was like a drape down too. So it was like half jumpsuit, half romper. Have you planned where you're wearing this, this jumper to, or have you just like, you know what? It's going to be like, I'm going to save it for a special day. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to see where, what, what day seems right to wear it. Right, where life takes you. Um, yeah, I'll just see where life takes me. <laughs> what I'm at that, that it's appropriate for. <laughs> so during this downtime, I imagine that, you know, I know it's, it's the off season right now and you're not in school. You've graduated. You have kind of probably more time to catch up on some TV shows. What's a show that you had just been watching during the spring? Um, well, I just finished The Bachelor. Oh, uh, I watched this. <laughs> yeah, The Bachelor. It, I've been watching The Bachelor slash Bachelorette since I was... Probably in seventh grade, since my mom let me. <laughs> Beginning of time. Yeah, since it was appropriate for me to watch, and I was at the appropriate age. But um, I pretty much watch every single season since then, except for one, because I refused to watch it, because I just did not like who The Bachelor was. And that may be the case this upcoming Bachelorette season. I may not watch it. You, uh -huh. I'm okay with, I'm actually kind of happy. I feel like she's real. We'll all relate to her. She's probably, she's going through a lot. no. Are you just biased because you're from the South? I am. Okay, I might be biased because you're, you're right. I am from the South. So I do I do appreciate that. But I do like that she's real and that I can tell she's struggling. And I think that's what you want to see on TV. You don't want to see someone who's like perfect and knows what to say all the time. Because that's like, I don't know what to say half the time. I stutter. I mess up. Like, that's what people want to see, I think. So who would you have chosen to be the Bachelorette? Hannah G. Okay, I could go with that one. Um, but I mean, yeah, I agree with everything you're saying about Hannah B. I think she's, <laughs> real. I think she's really looking to find love. <laughs> Aren't um, they all supposedly? But I just don't know if I can handle a whole season of, I don't know. Okay. Don't I'm going to check back with you. I'm going to see, I'm going to say like, did you not watch? <laughs> Are you sure you did not watch? I'm going to hold you to that. Yeah. I mean, I probably will. It's just <laughs> tentative right now. Okay, tentative. Before I let yeah. you go, is there anything cool you can tell me that you're working on or, you know, in the works? I've seen you kind of traveling. You've been to Warp City. Are you trying to hint at something that might be coming out soon? Maybe. Um, I have been working with Brian and New Balance over the past six months now. Um, it's been a great partnership, and I've had a lot of fun with it. And there are some exciting things coming in the future but I don't want to give too much away. But if you look at my Instagram, you'll probably get an idea. Uh -huh. But sure. I'm also going out to San Francisco with Kylie in two week, two weekends from now. Um, some more exciting things happening with the New Balance side that we're really excited about. And I think that a lot of female lacrosse players and girls will really like it. So that soon. I don't know when that will be released, but mm -hmm. I'm going out there in a couple weeks. So I'm excited for that. So we have some exciting things on the, on the horizon for you, Marie. We are so excited for you. We can't wait to see you back out there on the field. And I just want to say thank you for going off script with me. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. It's always nice to join Black Sports Network. And I love my conversations with you, Megan. So thanks for having me. <laughs> I made me feel so special. I might just go <laughs> cry. Okay. Thanks, Marie.